Hi class and welcome to another lesson. We're graphing rational functions in this lesson. It's section 9-3. A rational function can be identified when you're graphing a fraction, so y equals something, and this fraction has a variable in the denominator. So the letter x is in the denominator. So that's how you always know if you're graphing a rational function when you have a denominator and in that denominator is a variable. So the definition here Rational functions, they are undefined when the denominator is 0. It's a math rule. You cannot divide by 0. So whenever you graph these, you got to make sure that you never divide by 0. So this right here cannot equal 0. So x plus 3, if it equals 0, that means x would equal a negative 3. So that means x cannot equal a negative 3, because if it did, you would end up dividing by 0. So that's where this is coming from. So every rational function, you've got to make sure that you never have the denominator equal to 0. So that's where we get the x cannot equal 1 and the x cannot equal 4, because these two factors would make 0 if x was 1 or if x was a negative 4. And then this one right here, h of x equals the sine of x over x. Well, if x equals 0, you would end up dividing by 0. So you cannot do that, so x cannot equal 0. So the first thing you're going to do with a lot of these is you're going to set the denominator equal to 0 to see what x cannot be. Okay, rational graphs are very unique in that they may have breaks in continuity. What that means is that they are not always traceable without picking up your pencil. If you graph a line y equals mx plus b, this is a linear function, you can trace this line without ever lifting up your pencil. You can go forever to the right and forever to the left, and you would never, ever, ever have to pick up your pencil. So it doesn't have any breaks in continuity. The same thing with our parabolas, y equals x squared. This is a parabola, so I could draw this without ever lifting up my pencil. Right? I never would ever have to lift up my pencil. It doesn't have any breaks in continuity. And those are our parabolas. So now our rational graphs, you may have to start drawing our graph, lift up your pencil, go right here, and continue drawing your graph. So that's what it means, how it might be a break in continuity. These are done, the breaks in continuity are done through asymptotes as well as removable discontinuities, which I will talk about now. You have your vertical asymptotes. Vertical means up and down. So it's a line, here's an asymptote, that the graph of the function approaches infinity. These are determined by the factors that remain after simplifying the function. I will talk more about this in just a few minutes. So it's a vertical line that the graph approaches. Oftentimes it might be something that looks like this. It kind of increases and then it goes, it increases really fast, but it never goes across this green line. That's a vertical asymptote. A horizontal asymptote, very, very similar, except now it's just going to be a horizontal line. So this might be a horizontal asymptote that your graph approaches. It gets closer and closer and closer to your asymptote, but it never, ever touches it. It approaches it. And that's what that means. These ones are only determined by looking at the table on your graphing calculator. So this one, the vertical asymptotes are done by simplifying the function. This one, the horizontal ones, are only done by looking at your calculator. And then finally, we have our removable discontinuities. These are more often called holes in the graph. So whenever I say a hole or if I say a removable discontinuity, it's the exact same thing. It's a hole in the graph. These are determined by the factors that were canceled when simplifying the function. So this is where you might have a function that looks like this. It has a hole right here, and then it continues onward. And that's very, very possible. And I will talk about that here in just a little bit as well. So let's put this to practice. The horizontal discontinuity can only be done in your calculator. So the vertical asymptotes and the removal discontinuities, those can be done without using your graphing calculator. So that's what we're going to be doing on these first two problems on our notes. So looking at this one, we're going to identify what the vertical asymptotes are and if there's any removable discontinuities or holes. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our factors, which means we're going to factor. So now f of x equals the numerator is the difference of two squares, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1. The denominator can be factored. Whenever you see a trinomial, you've got to think factor. It's going to be x squared minus 5, sorry, x minus 5 times the quantity x minus 1. 
So we've successfully factored our function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce our function. So if any terms are the same, reduce them. x minus 1, x minus 1. So my reduce function is f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 5. All right, this is as far as we can reduce. So now from here, we're going to determine our vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is a line that the graph approaches when our denominator is 0. So what can our denominator not be? x minus 5 cannot equal 0. So if I solve for x here, x would then have to equal 5. So x cannot equal 5. If it did, we would end up dividing by 0. Look at this. 5 minus 5 is 0. And you can never, ever divide by 0. So your vertical asymptote is at the line x equals 5. That is going to be where your graph approaches, but it never, ever touches. x equals 5 is going to be our vertical asymptote. This might be confusing with two equal signs. Your vertical asymptote is x equals 5. We also have to determine any removable discontinuities. So the removable discontinuity in this one, this is the factor that had been canceled when reducing. So this x minus 1 term is a hole in the graph. So it's x minus 1, again, that equals 0. So you have to solve for x. When x equals 1, we're going to have a hole in the graph. So that's what we have for problem number 1a. The vertical asymptote, x equals 5. The removable discontinuity is x equals 1. And that's what I expect from you on this one. Why don't you try the next one on your own, please? Determine if there's any vertical asymptotes and determine if there's any removable discontinuities. The first thing you have to do, class, is you have to factor the top and the bottom. So f of x equals x minus 2 times x plus 2. And in the denominator, you have x plus 3 times x plus 2. These factors reduce. So your reduced function is f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 3. So then when you did this on your own, hopefully you got the vertical asymptote is when your denominator equals 0, which is when x equals a negative 3. And then your removable discontinuity, or your hole in the graph, was found by your cancel term, which was this one. So it's when x equals a negative 2. There is your removable discontinuity, when x equals a negative 2. This stuff will make more sense when we actually graph them in our next video.